Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. I'd like to take a few minutes and talk a little bit about Poisson Ratio uh, just to define Poisson's Ratio and also to uh, talk about why it's important related to strain gauge measurements. So let's get started. So Poisson's Ratio if we look at the equation for it, it's given by the, the Greek letter nu, which is equal to the strain in the transverse direction divided by the strain in the axial direction. And you'll typically see it written with a negative sign so that they reverse the sign. The reason for this is that the vast majority of materials, and I would say probably 99.99% .99 of them, are gonna have a Poisson ratio <clears throat> where the transverse strain is going to be opposite in sign of the axial strain. So for example, let's take a tension member and let's fix it at one end and we're going to load it at the other. So as we start to apply this load, what we find is that this member that starts out at some distance L actually gets a little bit longer. So there's a change in length over the original length of this tension member as you start to load it. And we know <clears throat> that that change in length divided by the original length is equal to our strain. Now, as this thing gets longer in this direction, it also starts to reduce in its cross section in the transverse direction. So I'll try to illustrate this with the green marker. Here we've got it getting longer. But you'll also notice that it has also gotten more narrow in the transverse direction as we've applied that load. The amount of strain that we would get <clears throat> in this transverse direction is a function of the material property as well as how much force and load we're putting in the longitudinal direction. So if we draw our coordinates, let's call this one X and this one Y, then the strain in the transverse direction is really the X direction, then the strain that's in the longitudinal direction is the strain that's in the Y direction. And again, we typically reverse the sign. Now, what you'll find is that for aluminum, the Poisson ratio typically runs about 0.33, and for steel, typically it runs around 0.29. And with composite materials and plastics, you'll see a lot more variation in it because of the, the nature of the composite or the nature of the plastic. Now, if your goal was to try to find what the Poisson Ratio is, all you really have to do is install one strain gauge in the Y direction or the longitudinal or axial direction, and you install a second strain gauge in the transverse direction. Install two gauges on this piece, you put the load on it, we look at the ratio between these two strain gauges, and we have our Poisson ratio. Now the reason it's important relative to strain gauges is that this gives you the ability to establish material properties. Maybe you're working on a new composite or a new plastic and you're trying to establish these material properties. Uh, this gives you a method to be able to do that. The strain gauges will give you a method to be able to do it. The second reason that this is important is that oftentimes your using strain gauges to calculate stresses. And if you're using strain gauges to calculate stresses, uh, typically in order to do that, you're gonna use Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law is for <clears throat> a biaxial stress state, you're gonna find that the stress in the X direction is equal to The 
you're going to find that the stress in the x direction is going to be equal to the Young's modulus over 1 minus the Poisson ratio squared times the strain in the x direction plus Poisson ratio times the strain in the y direction. So, and if we wanted to calculate the strain in the y direction, it's going to be equal to the Young's modulus over 1 minus the Poisson ratio squared times the strain in the y direction plus the Poisson ratio times the strain in the x direction. So in order to calculate stresses for Hooke's laws in a biaxial stress state, you got to have the Poisson ratio, you got to have the Young's modulus, and basically you got to have the strain from two different gauges that are perpendicular to each other in order to be able to calculate those stresses. So Poisson's ratio, is it important? Yes. Can you find it using strain gauges? Yes. Do you use it for calculating stresses? Yes. Now, another reason it may be important is that you're not so concerned about stress analysis, but you're trying to build a product or a device to be sensitive to load. And this is a great example. This is a compression load cell. And if you look inside it, you'll see that you've got a very small two element uh, T rosette strain gauge with one gauge in the transverse direction and one gauge in the longitudinal direction. So these gauges are effectively taking advantage of putting a compressive load on this device and generating the most electrical output signal you can get by taking advantage of Poisson's ratio. So you will find in some applications, you might take advantage of Poisson's ratio in order to generate more electrical signal out of the strain gauge circuit. So that's Poisson's ratio in a nutshell. If you'd like to find out more about Poisson's ratio or strain gauges in general, uh, please feel free to take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com or you can call us in Applications Engineering by dialing 919-365-3800 and follow the prompts till you get to Applications Engineering. Thank you.